Hi guys, James here from Optics Warehouse, your night vision and hunting specialist. And today what we're going to be doing whilst out in the field, whilst these are on a uh, rim fire and on a centre fire rifle, we are going to be comparing the, uh, the Hick Micro Alpex to the brand new PARD DS3570 mil laser range finding version. So, what they represent is probably two of the top three night vision day night scopes on the market at the moment. Obviously, we've got these two and the uh, Pulsar Digi XC50. Unfortunately, haven't got one with us today, but it's by the by. Um, and looking at each one, they both have their own sort of individual characteristics, their pros and cons, as you have it, um, as to what um, what's going to perform better in certain situations. Now, in terms of actually looking more like a scope, I'd probably say that the Alpex is going to be the winner in that respect, just because, yes, obviously it's got the LRF built in, but of course that does detract slightly a, a bit away, and of course it's got the sort of the block on the back here, rather than sort of like the integrated button system on the back. So I'd say the Alpex does have more of a scope-like look. However, I would say that the pod is considerably lighter, so it makes it a nice, uh, a nicer addition to any sort of setup, um, and it won't obviously add too much weight to a varmint setup, or add too much weight to say like a lightweight air gun setup, for example. It's going to be nice and um, versatile for any sort of different, um, different sort of uh, uh, requirements. As you can see, I've got the Alpex here on my 17 HMR today. Uh, that's just on a standard one-piece mount, but 30 mil tube, where you do get a nice amount of spacing on on both sides, as you do with the DS35. So I've spoken a bit about sort of the external characteristics. Um, I'll just go into it in a bit more detail. As you can see here on the Alpex, nice, um, nice long eye box. As I said before, this nice integrated menu. When you've then got your three sort of turret style system on the top here, where you can put your removable battery, uh, you've got your USB-C data port, and then of course all your menu systems to go through for future to for, go through for for future applications in terms of obviously like your zeroing, all that sort of stuff. You've got your adjustable objective on the front and um, what I have seen a lot of people do is put a fishing coast on the front of this because being a new scope sometimes they can be a bit tight. I mean this particular one it, it is a little bit tight don't get me wrong so maybe investing in a fishing coast that might might help to increase the fulcrum and then help you um, generate a sort of throw lever style so to speak. On the DS35 itself as I said, it looks like a smaller scope, but again, that nice 30 mil tubing and what this the DS35 actually has, as well as its circular display internally, which I'll come on to soon, um, it actually has this really nice extended eye release. So you do get a lot of um, a lot of eye relief, so making it nice and versatile for for a variety of different mounting solutions. Turrets are a bit smaller than that of the Alpex. You've got it all through your main menu system here on the top. You press your, your, um, your zeroing, etc. And then on the side, you can put a full 18650 that goes all the way through. But then that, of course, does make this turret redundant. It has no function whatsoever. If you go onto the back, you say it's got this block system. It says it's not, not quite integrated into the ocular. But again, nice laser range finding, Wi-Fi, camera record, chase the day, night, all those, all the easy functions that you need to need to interact with. On the top, obviously, big, big distinct, um, big distinct difference is, of course, the LRF and the IR built in on top. This does come, of course, in a non-LRF version as well, if you want. Um, but of course, the IR does come as a standard with the unit. On you want your IR with the Alpex, you have to use the quick release IR that comes with it in the box. Looking on the actual. Um, on the actual focus ring, this does incorporate a throw lever, which does make it nice and easy to make small adjustments for when you need to. Onto the front, you've actually got a small aperture. I won't put the rifle at the, uh, rifle at the camera, but so you can see there's a small aperture there that all you need to do is just simply adjust in and out for daytime use. When you switch to nighttime, all you do is flick that cap around and then you have the full amount of light is able to go into the actual system itself. With the Alpex, because it's got its sort of real low light capabilities um, sensor inside, um, it is just on a full aperture there where you can use that in day and night time and it works just as well for both. So what we're going to do is I've got a target out at 100 yards and I've got a gong underneath. Both of these rifles have been zeroed to these scopes uh, so they should be absolutely bang onto the gong. Um, obviously that's besides my shooting so you never know what can happen there. Slight bit of wind so 17 might struggle but it should be should be okay today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to record footage through both units, have a look, obviously see which one see which one you guys think works works best during the day and then we'll follow up with a few video videos in the future which showing both of them performing at night with a variety of different illuminators um starting off with the ones that they come with and of course then some third-party irs 
So, without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of shots with each of these, um, each of these rifles and each of these scopes at the same target, a nice bright red gong. They're 100 yards away uh, and we'll, uh, we can then make our own decisions as to what, uh, what we think works best in the day between the Hickmicro Alpex and the PAR DS35 70mm laser rangefinder. Right, okay, so what I've done so I've just set up the Alpex uh, to be the best for the uh, best for the situation. So we've got a bit of cloud cover here. We've got the sun coming in every now and then. Um, so I'll do exactly the same for the pod in a second. What we're going to do, got a few shots, got three rounds in here. I'm just going to take three shots at the target uh, and hopefully we can hit the gong so you guys can quite clearly see it. So we've got it freshly sprayed so it is nice and clear to see. Got this on full mag of four times. I say got this in focus as possible. And let's have a, have a quick look, hopefully just wait for that little bit of wind to die down there. But we'll just see what happens here. There you go, that's a nice one there. Let's just put another one in. As you can see, the wind, wind has just pushed that one ever so slightly to the right. So I'll just go there again. There you go. Down there. And finally, we'll put a third shot in. There you go. Three nice shots uh, in the gong. As you can see, it's shooting just a little low there. Uh, that first one I just aimed a bit high, but you can see those, those two shots there. You can quite clearly see the target nice and red, pops up as clear as day. And so without further ado, we'll now move on to the pod. Okay, so uh, now I have the, um, the DS35 all set up and ready to rock and roll. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you there that's on the highest mag and i can simply change that back there you go so if i change the mag back there change that one there there you go back to 5.6 or if i want i can then change it up to up to 11.2 times so there's two options on the magnification there you can't sort of uh, scroll through but as i say if you, if you go you can choose as to which one you want to um, want to go for um right so Without further ado, I'm just going to ping that with the LRF. That's showing 110 metres on that one. There you go. And yeah, it's obviously, if I wanted to, it's got some ballistics already set up in there, but so a ballistics calculator video will be coming shortly. So let's have a look at this one here. Okay. So. 100 yards at a gong. There you go. Slap bang in the centre, which I'm happy with. I'll just put another one in there just to be sure. There you go. Happy days. 243 zero on that one. As you can see, obviously. The gong shows up. There's slight more detail if you look at the target, which is just slightly peeled off there, just from the uh, the ricochet. But so you can slight more detail in the picture there than in the Alpex, but you do lose the red ever so slightly. So so there are pros and cons between each one. But as you see, that is the um, the sort of daytime shooting between each one. Um, let's have a, a look on there again. Yeah, just showing just showing the rings there, but you do just do just lose the red. So that's having a look at the daytime image between the PARD DS35 70mm LRF and the Hikmiko Alpex. I'll let you guys decide for yourself as to which image you think is best. Of course, we will have some nighttime footage coming out soon as well, which is, is going to be the most important key factor, let's be honest, because that's what the majority of scopes are used for. Any info and questions, please don't hesitate to drop us an email or give us a phone call. All details are on our website. But in the meantime, hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you found it informative. I've been James, your night vision hunting specialist, and this has been another video from Optics Warehouse.